Compared to the real world, 60% of neurons in the hippocampus shut down in virtual reality. Part of the challenge right now in VR is if you go in and you're just seeing things and you're not hearing things that correlate with that, that really upsets your inner ear and your brain starts to go a little wacko. So we thought very simply that, hey, we'll put the rat in virtual reality. What's the difference between television and virtual reality? We all know what a TV is. You sit somewhere and stuff happens there. Virtual reality reacts to you on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. That's the big difference. Watch your feet. So this is the virtual reality machine. And now the sounds and light from the world outside are cut off. How is the brain creating space? We all agree on it. We all take it for granted that space exists. That's what got us into virtual reality because that's where you can manipulate space. That's where the rat would sit. So that's a giant ball. That in turn is picked up by a bunch of sensors around it, goes to a computer outside the room. So that once the rat is in, the image is everywhere around him. Next door to the virtual reality apparatus was a real room. So this is the real world maze. The virtual room and real room are the same. If there was a neuron that was active here in the real room, will it be active at the same place in the virtual room? What we are going to see now is the actual data while there was a rat that was running in the real world. In this case, the rat was running around in this maze. This neuron was active when the rat went to only one place, nowhere else. In virtual reality, we can decide what tells the rat where he is and what is space. Never expected what was going to come out. And this is the rat actually running the maze in virtual reality. This neuron is active everywhere. There is no map here, it's just a mess. Compared to the real world, 60% of neurons in the hippocampus shut down in virtual reality. Same rat, same reward. He seems perfectly happy. I haven't seen any other manipulation people have done, which causes such a massive shutdown, unless it's some pathological disease. This abnormal activity pattern that happens in the hippocampus, can it rewire the brain in some funky way so that it has long-term consequences? Good or bad, I don't know. This is actually a disaster training site. The drones are going to have to be smart enough to follow them. It's like going between buildings or through trees. We use these very small drones because they're safe. In a virtual space, though, we can make them look like huge drones and we can simulate large camera systems or, or other types of sensors. Movies, television, even our phone, that information is at arm's length and we can bring it close, but still there's a boundary for that. The difference in VR is the lack of the proscenium, and that's a profoundly different relationship that the human ends up having with the information. That is a relationship that we haven't had before other than with the physical world that we're in right now. In the not too distant future, some people will be spending eight to 10, 12 hours a day in VR because it'll be part of their job. We were worried about television in the 50s and 60s and kids. We were worried about computer games in the 90s. The world didn't end because of television, but we want to try and create a world without digital regrets. We believe within 10 years, we'll be able to figure out how is it the brain is creating that perception of space. The puzzle is, why did that neuron fire here? Lots of funky stuff is going on under the hood. The next year I went up and stood in front of the track where you launch, looked down the track, and there was no sense of any fear or trepidation. That's when I had in mind to come back and do it again. Welcome out to the Bonneville Salt Flats.